together. It is still garbage on. We're making our way through the books. I have finished so far this month only two of the books I want to get on my list, um, which is annoying because I have loads of them that I want to get through and I have not been making the kind of progress I wanted. However, I just have to look at that. At the minute, I'm working through Hello Friend, We Missed You by Richard Owen Roberts. I'm halfway through it, I'm more than halfway, roughly, I guess. And it is good. I am fully enjoying it. It's like about this like um, awkward guy who's from Anglesey, like an island off Wales, like Welsh Island. Um, and he lives, I think, in London or something like that. Like uh, he does film writing or screenwriting, like some sort of creative thing. Um, but it's not really going to plan. Like Jack Black has like a two-year option out on one of their projects, but he's like sitting on it. You know, it's like stalled. Um, he's like not in a good place, and his dad is dying. But he doesn't have like a very good relationship with his dad so he goes back to Anglesey to like look after him but not very well and he meets uh the dad's carer who's about his age and she's a she's a woman and um she's a bit wild like a bit of like a, a wild soul and does like random stuff and he's like he's less like this do you know what I mean and he's like really awkward and he keeps having really awkward like uh like conversations with her and interactions with her but he's obviously like like falling in love with her, do you know what I mean? And um, the situation is just really awkward, but amazing and I'm fully enjoying it. Like I'm feeling a bit seen with the awkwardness to be honest, but it's definitely the best Dewey Thun book I've read so far. Um, okay, I have to go to the office now. <sighs> Okay, I'm not done with my book yet. I'm almost done and it's still really good. But while I was at work procrastinating, as you do, um, I watched this video about it by Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. And it was only a month ago um, that they posted this one, like a review of this book or like a little teaser of it. But I missed it somehow. Like I watched their channel like relatively regularly and uh, I missed it somehow. I would have noticed this one coming up because this has been in my house a while now um but their view of it was so good like it it captured it perfectly like way better than I'll be able to capture it when I'm done with it like um he made this really good point like um the way he like repeats things so Hill behind here he repeats things when he's thinking them like uh, loads of the book just like takes place in his head right like it, not really a whole lot of action happens it's just him talking to himself and like things he's thinking and like just like awkward thoughts he has um and he repeats things quite a lot sort of in his head and um you was saying in Gunpowder Fiction and Plot, this, like, review, how that's how he thinks in his own head, and, like, that's true, that's how I think as well, like, I think it, it, like, captures, like, internal monologue quite well, you know, um, and I, I knew that, and, like, I think that's one of the things I like so much about it, but it didn't, like, trigger fully in that way in my mind, like, I didn't realize fully, you know, that until he said it, Anyway, I'm going to link that below. I think you should watch it if you're, like, confused about my ramblings about it or if after what I say you're still like, ugh, I don't know, <laughs> like, which is fair. That's a fair point. Um, I would say go and watch that one. Okay, I have finished it and it was so good all the way up to the end. Like, I really loved the ending and everything. Like, it, it was, like, you know, funny, you know awkward and funny and sort of like like cringe humor you know but also like quite poetic really and I don't know felt quite profound at the end like I don't want to give it away to be honest but I really enjoyed it okay anyway five stars for that one amazing okay now I've got to pick a new one right I've got my stack here I'm having a hard time choosing like part of me thinks I should sort of start on these ones these like Mab and Augie retelling ones because those are always really good but also part of me is sort of weirdly drawn to like this one or like this one which may be a bit weird I think I'm gonna ask Anwen yeah I'm gonna go seek the baby's wisdom are these all fun? yeah why? Well, because those are the books for March. Mm -hmm. No, 
that one. That one, then that one. Okay, Spud, talk to me. Why have you picked this one? Because, well, I know those are flowers, but it's kind of like a cheerleader thing. It looks like on a cheerleader book, and I got a cheerleader. But they're like, um, tumbling. they're like flowers for a funeral. What's that? Like when you go to a funeral and someone's died and you put flowers on their grave. Mm -hmm. That's like the kind of flowers they are. But you liked that one better than like this one. Um, well, yeah, because, well, the other one is more like really excited. Oh. Like, both. Like, brown, brown. Oh. Okay. So apparently, I'm reading this one next. Uh, it's one of the only ones in the stack that I was considering getting rid of, but couldn't bring myself to do it. Uh, I think I got it free from the book hut back in the pandemic when, like, we were frequenting the book hut because all the bookstores were closed. So, and I'm, I'm like gonna give myself full DNFing disclosure like abilities here. Oh shit! Almost died. <laughs> <laughs> Get off. Get off here, just jump down. Um, okay, so I'm giving myself like full <laughs> DNF abilities on this one. Like, I'm not even gonna feel guilty. Like, at any point in this book, I feel like I'm not feeling it. I'm just gonna end it all and give it away, and that's gonna be the end of the project. Like, at least it will free me from this like pulling thing that's lasted like for ages and ages and ages. Where I pick it up and go, Shall I give it away? and then read the back and go, Maybe not, like that, you know. At least I will have tried it and I can give it away. This is takes place in Cardiff, in the city that I live in, in Wales. It takes place in 1999. So it's partially about this, like, old guy who dies and, um, like, his group of friends that come together at his funeral. Um, but also it's partially about the city itself at that time, like, sort of painting a portrait of it in the 90s. Um, Walsh Assembly kicks off in a welter of sexual scandal, fireworks and Shirley Bassey. Um, but also... Shirley Bassey, the famous one. Yeah. The spud likes Shirley Bassey. You like Shirley Bassey? Yeah, I, I, I really want to be um, Shirley Bassey for World Book Day. Um, anyway, Charlie Unger's dead. Uh, he's been lying in his flat uh, for over a week. He was old Carter through and through like Dame Shirley. He was a black kid from Tiger Bay. He found fame and fortune in the 50s as a boxer. That. So then, like, he died, right? And his funeral brings all of his, like, mates back together. Um, Cardiff Dead paints an unforgettable picture of an unfamiliar new Wales, from developers' boardrooms to prostitutes' pubs, from boxing gyms to surfing beaches. Uh, funny, dark, and fresh. This is one from the heart. So, the back of it, I feel like it could potentially be really good, but also could potentially be really shit. So, like, I'm just gonna give it a go, right? Gonna give it a go, see what happens. Um, I just went to like a parent-teacher conference at Spud School and it's the first like in-person parent-teacher conference we've had since the pandemic kicked off. It's been ages um, and like I went in and they ask you to like sit down for a sec and like look at her like work or whatever but obviously because it's like for you know year two all the chairs are tiny so you just have to like sit in freaking tiny chairs and just pretend like this is normal you know like yeah, my butt does not fit on this chair. Like, can we talk about that? Um, anyway, like, basically the teachers, like, there's two of them. There's, like, a helper teacher and her normal teacher. And they're really nice and funny. And, like, uh, they said that Alma's, like, a joy. Because she loves the school and she loves everyone there. And she's, like, the only kid, he said. She's, like, the only kid in the whole of the class that doesn't have beef with anyone. Like, he doesn't have to worry about sticking her literally with anyone, like, a group to work with. Because she doesn't have to worry, like... Oh, she doesn't go with that person or they're gonna fight or she doesn't get on with that person like she's just like the buffer person he can stick anywhere because she just loves everybody <sighs> like she's still dog shit at math though so that's the thing <laughs> like he was like oh her reading's so good and i was like i know <laughs> she's like her math though like i can't even blame baby girl for that like she was not born to be good at math like neither of her parents are good at math it's just how it was meant to be. Also, just randomly, can we talk about the name Zella? How amazing is the name Zella? 
Like, I almost want to have another child just so I can name her Zella. Also, randomly, I pass by this twice a day, and every time I pass it, it gives me, like, a jolt of anxiety. Like, I know that's its point. It's there to give us anxiety, but I wish it wasn't there. Oh my god. House prices are out of control. This is ridiculous. Holy shit, look at this one. Holy shit. Okay, I'm really liking this book. Like, I'm not very far in it because I haven't really had a chance yesterday. But I'm really enjoying it. And it's reminding me of this other book, which was one of my favorite books of last year called Things That Make the Heart Beat Faster or something. Like, I'll put a picture of it. And both of them are really good with, like, dialogue and, you know, capturing life in Cardiff and, like, a... I don't know, a kind of sort of old Cardiff, like people who are like born and bred in Cardiff and it, like like really getting like that setting really right, do you know what I mean? Like funny, um, but like genuine as well. So there was this part here like from earlier, the character, like the main character, he's come back to Cardiff like he's from there and he's gone off and he's come back um, for the funeral of a friend and he, he's just run into his dad and his dad's like waiting outside the pub for it to open in the morning like he, he wants a drink and he, he's waiting to be you know the first for a drink he says Maz was proud of himself he'd got out of the pub after having just the one bought his dad an next drink and then Scarford saying he had a train to catch it was an achievement really there's something so seductive about a pub in the late morning there are no illusions left you know a successful young professional popping in for a quick one on the way to the theater everyone's hardcore at 11 30 in the morning and in a good mood too you've got 12 hours drinking time ahead of you a pint on the bar ready for you a little sunlight poking in through a window and the barman watching richard and judy on the tv it's a time to savor life and your lack of a part in it <laughs> i really enjoy that Okay, I just spent the whole morning at work on like a, an eye-opening Eurovision 2022 Odyssey, right? So they announced the UK entry for this year. Like there were rumours, okay, that it was going to be this random TikTok guy, blah, blah, blah. And it did end up being that. But it, like it's good. It's good, right? I enjoyed it and I have high hopes for it. I don't know. Like my boss and also like those people, they feel like there's no hope. Like just give up all hope regarding like UK entries to Eurovision. But I feel like TikTok star, okay, that might be the way to go because Europe's already in love with him. He's got millions of followers. I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, so I listened to that one and I enjoyed it. So then I was like, well, what's the competition for this year? You know, scope it out. I haven't, you know, updated myself as they like come out, like the songs get launched and sort of released and stuff in stages as you sort of like go along in the year and then the competition's in May. So the last time I checked on it, it was ages ago. So I thought, you know, catch up on it. Holy shit. The songs for this year are so good. So there's like a weird Moldovan one where like the the song itself is like a, like a Balkans turbo folk, which I appreciate. Okay. I love a bit of Balkans turbo folk me with like the violin. Anyway, but the music video was banging. I loved it. Like there's a carpet. There's like a border agent. So good. And like Italy's won this year, fire, pure fire, again. Like they won it last year and now it's being held in Italy because they won it last year. And I reckon they could win again because they were so good. Um, also Estonia was giving me hardcore old school cattle drive vibes. Like like an old school Western movie, like John Wayne, like bow legged on a horse, like that kind of vibe. And I fully appreciated it. Like I deserve that for today. There was like this super weird one, like Eurovision, there's always about half of them super fucking weird, right? Um, <clears throat> and I wasn't sure, like I was listening to it, like it's, it's Serbia, you know, so it's in like Serbia Croat, like she's not speaking English. And she was like, blah, 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 Meghan Markle, blah, 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 Meghan Markle. And I was like, am I losing my fucking mind? Or is she just saying Meghan Markle over and over again? And I googled it and yeah, like... <clears throat> Like, an article came up that said, like, Meghan Markle's hair treatment, like, subject of bizarre Eurovision song. The song's just basically about Meghan Markle's hair. Oh, God. And also, there's one, <clears throat> Albania, 
the song itself, you know, it's a bit forgettable. Like, it's not good, it's not bad, like, whatever. But the music video was horrifying. It was absolutely terrifying. It's like this Dracula demon witch, like, mystic reincarnation weirdness that I'm pretty sure will give me nightmares. I feel like I have PTSD from accidentally watching all of that. I don't know. Like, I feel like my mind is messed up for today. Like, I can't focus properly on things because I've, like, stunted it this morning with just too much Eurovision all at once. This has turned into a weird murder mystery. Was not expecting that. I thought it was going to be like, you know, about, I don't know, like character driven, not plot driven, you know, but like uh, learning about a bunch of people sort of coming together and who they used to be, you know, and like in their city. But I think like it could be a teaser, it could be a teaser, maybe it's nothing, but I think it's just taken a turn. And now that random guy who just like died of a heart attack in his flat, I think maybe he was murdered. And it's a whole thing. It's kicking off. I can't believe I was going to give this book away. Shit. Which, which pastry is yours? This one's mine because it's heavier. So. Okay, that one's for daddy, is it? Yeah, because it's, it's light and this is heavy. We also got a cactus, do we? <laughs> yeah. Is he in there? He's like a little bobbly dude in there. What should we name him? Um, Bubble. Okay. This is the hall. Yeah? Uh-huh. I wanna open this one. <laughs> awesome. Okay. I finished it. Cardiff Dead by John Williams, right? I think I might read more of this guy's books. Like, um, I know that he's done at least one other one, the one that's on here, five pubs, two bars, and a nightclub. But I think he's done other ones as well. I think he's quite a prolific author, this guy. And I might read some more stuff because I fully enjoyed that. Like, uh, can we just talk about how you can't judge a book by its cover and why that's a cliche? I almost binned this book. And uh, in the end, a full five stars, most definitely. Like, I love books. I think it's just time to admit to myself that for some reason, I love the crap out of fiction books set in Cardiff, written by Cardiff authors, where um, it's a bit humorous, like sort of dark humor, um, sort of gritty, like not too gritty, but like a bit dark, you know, and where dialogue plays a huge part like um the information that you get about the characters isn't in their head it's not like backstory stuff like that it's you know conversations that the characters have with each other you know um and like the dialogue's really i don't know like a bit gritty as well and like anyway i fully appreciated that and it did end up being like a bit of a murder mystery not like really intense it was i think in the end like character driven instead of plot driven but there was like a bit of a murder situation and the ending, like I did not expect it. And I think I loved it. I think I loved this book. <laughs> like, oh, it's so weird. But I loved it. Anyway, I've picked the next one. 
Um, when I had Emma pick this one up for me, she said that I have to read Anthracite next, but she's snoozing. <laughs> so I'm not making that happen. I'm instead going to move to Catch and Keen Salt. Um, and this one is a bit of a romance, right? So it starts, oh God, it starts in Cardiff um, in the 1800s and it's like a sort of true-ish story it's based on a true story like this person this author Catherine Keane it's based on the story of her grandparents um so it's a Cardiff girl in the 1800s she's like a maid or something and she falls in love with um a ship's cook from Barbados and they sort of travel the world I guess they go to San Francisco they do like the West Indies stuff like that um but then they've got to come back to Cardiff for something um I think it's a bit of a romance a bit of an adventure bit about like racism in Cardiff um which I think will be really interesting. Salt is based on the lives of Keane's great-grandparents who married in 1878. It is their love story. <sighs> Amazing. Y'all I have got a shoulder kink. Do you get this? It's like you know vampire diaries when they get like something stabbed in the back you know and like the thing is still there like it's like a stick or like, you know, like a knife or something. And they're not dead, you know, because they're vampires. You know, it's just like, ugh, it's like hurting them. It's like a stick just stuck and they can't reach it. And they're like, and so get the stick out, you know. That's me right now. That's basically like the human equivalent. Like I keep moving like this and it's like a free stick. It's like stuck. Went to yoga this morning. Now my downward dog was excruciating. It's like, I don't. Oh, like now I'm in my 30s, like just going to bed. Even just sleeping is a hazardous activity. So nice. I have thoughts. I have thoughts about this book. And they're maybe not good thoughts. Um, not positive. Not positive thoughts. Um, <clears throat> okay. Like, part of me wants to have rant just, like, about it. But also, you know, I'm only, what? I'm only, like, 44 pages into a book that's, like, 200 pages long. So, you know, I need to read a bit more, I think, before I let myself rant. Also, we're coming to the end of this vlog, aren't we? Like, it's the end of the week. You know, I don't want to end on a rant, okay? Particularly if it, if it's premature, if it's a premature rant. Like, maybe the situation will change as I get further into the book. So I'm just, I'm just going to leave it here. You know, leave it on a hopeful, like a hopeful note. You know, like, maybe this book you know, will be different as I get into it. Um, and just leave it there. <laughs> okay, uh, that's the end. That's the end of the week. It's the end of the vlog. Um, if you have any questions, you know, thanks for watching, by the way. Uh, if you have any comments <laughs> for me, uh, or anything, please, please let me know. Um, and I will... See you next week. So I, I feel like I'm in like a really weird headspace thinking about this book right now. It's like I'm not like able to have other concrete thoughts because it's like taken over like the front part of the mind function. Um. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you want to ask me anything, talk to me about anything. What are you reading? What is your life like? Let me in. Okay. And I will see you next week. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.